one, Tarnation! Uh, I meant to do that. And hey folks, this is Apple Geek. Well, here we are, finally at the end of Season 8. I gotta say, this has been a very interesting season on, an, on a number of fronts. It's uh, been a bit, little bit of a roller coaster ride, you know. Some we had some not so great episodes, and we had some fantastic episodes, and just a, you know, overall kind of an interesting good mix. I think we ended on a, a pretty well note. I know twenty four wasn't everyone's favorite episode. I liked it. So, uh, but yeah, um, wide range of uh, of episodes this season, and uh, also it's been a little bit interesting just from the whole uh, you know behind the scenes things like the. You know, the early airings and leaked episodes and, uh, uh, you know, copyright issues on YouTube and all that fun stuff. So it's been a bit of a challenging season in, in some respects. Thankfully, I have managed to keep myself basically spoiler-free pretty much just by cutting myself off from most of the fandom entirely. So it's the price I pay just to try and go into this totally blind. And I am completely, 100% totally blind on this finale. I know absolutely nothing about what's going to happen here. I've had plenty of theories, as I've shared with you guys. you know. And uh, just, just to note a few things on that really quickly here, I'm assuming it's going to... Well, obviously it's going to be about the school, because that's been the overarching storyline this season. I'm thinking maybe it's going to be like a graduation day scenario or something. Uh, I'm not really sure. I mean, we haven't seen any indication that we're going there, but it could easily happen. Um, you know, obviously, I'm curious to see what the end game is here for Chancellor Nase. He's been very absent the season. I expected him to be popping around more, at least have more things going on that are visible as to what he's doing or planning. And we only got to see him once since the premiere in uh, Friendship University. And that was mid-season. So, you know, I, I have to ask, is he really even the main villain this season, or is he being used by somebody else? And of course, there's Cozy Glow. Uh, you know, I, I've had many thoughts and theories about Cozy Glow, which I'm not going to take time to go through again here now, but... Is she going to factor into this? I would be surprised if she doesn't. But then again, the way things are going in the show, maybe she'll, you know, the truth of her won't be fully revealed here, and this will go into season nine. Really hard to say. Um, and and the, for that matter, you know, it's, I, I don't want to assume anything because I was certain that Chrysalis was not going to show up in the season, and then she did in the middle of the season in the, the mid-season finale. You know, is Chrysalis going to suddenly show up in this again here in, in the finale? I don't think so, but again, I I don't want to assume anything at this point here. And of course, one of the big bombshells of the season just a few episodes ago was the fact that the Tree of Harmony is now revealed itself to be a sentient being, and I have to wonder, is she going to be involved in the events of the finale here in some way? There's there's that factor too. Um, and of course, I, just on more personal note, I have to wonder, are the CMCs going to finally get a chance to be in the finale? That's kind of been a long-running wish of mine. They always kind of seem to be out of the picture when any of these big things happen in this world. But they have been involved with the school this season. They were the ones who uh, had the first interactions with Cozy Glow. And they were actually made honorary graduates of the school and were supposed to have been uh, like tutors for the students or something as a result. And that's one thing that you know, for all the continuity that they've had this season, that's one thing they have not looped back around to. We haven't seen anything of the CMCs doing tutor-type things since that took place. So, uh, you know, is are they going to factor into this story somehow? It's hard to say, but I'm going to just, just stop yakking about all this and theorizing, because I really want to watch this, and I'm sure you guys too, do too. So, here we go. And if you, in case you can't already tell... I am a little tired and definitely a little bit wired, and I've got my supply of Red Bull here because it is a big finale, and yeah, this is going to be interesting. So, without any further ado, part one of the season eight finale starting now. Derpy! We're off to a great start. Ah, Cozy Glow. Oh, poor Derpy. Okay, Cozy Glow right off the bat. Thank you for the mail delivery. Have a wonderful day. Aww. Just... Hmm. Ka who is? You're new here, right? Who is that? I'm Cozy Glow, Professor Sparkle's friendship assistant. <coughs> Welcome to our school. Wow, she got an official title. Your first class is just down 
that hall. You are being super helpful. <laughs> okay, significant emphasis on Cozy Glow. Seven-letter word for teamwork. Have you tried synergy? Really? That's it. <laughs> That's cozy. Oh, oh, that buzzword. Hmm. Good morning, Professor Sparkle. <laughs> the mail's here already. What time is it? Oh, oh no. My class's field trip to Cloudsdale. Field trip. Oh. <laughs> sorry. I asked Professor Rainbow Dash to cover for you. Aww. And she said yes. Uh huh. I told her how busy you are and how much her loyalty meant to you. I also color coded your teaching schedule by friendship element and cataloged all the magical artifacts in the school. I hope that's okay. Oh, okay. Uh, oh, cataloged all the magical that's artifacts. Amazing. Hmm. You're like my right hoof pony. I don't know what I'd do without you. <laughs> it's like you taught me. Helping is what friendship's all about. Exactly. And hopefully my hmm. class is learning that on their field trip right now. I heard they might do some sightseeing first. Hmm? What is Cozy Glow's game? I want to know! Rainbow Factory. Hmm, we haven't seen this in quite a while. I know, right? Hey, the cool stuff's over here! Wow, oh, they must have gave him all the spell for... <laughs> You can't normally, but for our trip, I cast a spell that lets us walk like Pegasi. There we go. Nice. Hey, Yona, come check out this view. Uh, and Yona is not doing well here. Yona's not scared. <laughs> oh! Uh, somebody catch her quickly, please. How many? T Seriously, how many times are we going to almost kill Yona in this show? <laughs> It's a running gag at this point. <laughs> okay, man, Cozy Glow's laid it on really thick, and I just, I, I'm looking for any kind of hints, any anything to work with, and I'm just not getting anything yet. I, um, well, something's got to happen there before we're done with this, so it's going to be good. Okay, who's gonna catch her? Oh, oh no! What? We gotta catch her. What? Are ponies losing their magic somehow? It's okay, Yona. You like School flying, raised. Flying, not falling. Oh. <laughs> I don't understand. It's like my spell stopped working. That's never happened before. Mm. Somebody's been cataloging cataloging magical artifacts. Out of the sky. Slow down. What happened? I cast a spell for our field trip to Cloudsdale, but my magic just failed. We barely caught every pony in time. I'm glad you're all hmm. okay, but I'm sure it's nothing to worry about, Starlight. Maybe you did your um, spell wrong. No. Let's take a look. <laughs> the face. Yeah, her magic is failing too. Maybe you did your spell wrong. Oh no. Where did he ran into the door? My magic is gone. This is I not good. So <laughs> still think there's nothing to worry about. This doesn't make any sense. Well, the magic I guess I still have their flight. Disappear. Something has to be causing this. Um, didn't we learn in class about a creature that eats magic? Ter tea T Rex? Oh no! No, this is not that. He better be. Spike, what's wrong? What the? <laughs> we haven't seen. Oh, his magic's failing too. Celestia, we've all been called to an emergency meeting in Canterlot. Look! Oh boy. Pretty sure I know what it's about. Yeah, she barely got that letter off to Spike before her magic failed. Reporting tales of their magic failing, spells going wrong, potions not working, even raising the moon has become difficult. Are there similar troubles in Pony? Oh, we experienced it first, huh? It's the same in my kingdom. The Crystal Heart seems safe for now, but I worry if this continues. 
So who's behind this? Letter for the princesses from Star Swirl the Bearded. So we get the pillars involved. Okay. It is even more terrible than we feared. Magic uh -oh. is disappearing all across Equestria. <gasps> Star Swirl believes the power will drain from our land in three days. Oh First, no. Unicorn magic and spells will fail. That's what's happening now. On the then second day, creatures will lose their magic abilities. <gasps> oh no! And finally, Mark Paragon. magical artifacts will stop working when the sun sets uh, on the third day. Magical the magic artifacts in again. Our world will be gone forever. <gasps> oh Why no! Why is this happening now? That's the worst part. We have no idea. Has any pony checked on T-Rex? You mean the big red scary centaur? Are we really going back there again? <gasps> <laughs> if he has nice found Mickey. some way to escape his prison or work from within it, he could be responsible for this. Oh! The best so far, some pony should investigate. Are we? Go. Are we really going there? Not without us, you will. Wait. Did you say we? <laughs> I finally learned that it's okay to count on your friends for help. Um, Thank you. Gonna come, right? <laughs> Thank you all. We will search for ways to protect Equestria in your absence. Be mm. careful. Tartarus has changed since you were there, and now holds many dangerous creatures. Ooh. And you won't be able to rely on your magic. With her friend by this her is now, true. She won't have to. This is going to okay. get a whole lot worse before it gets better. Plan all my student files and my annotated syllabus notes. If anything goes wrong, get Celestia. Got it. Maybe I should just close the school and send my students home. <sighs> Would you go save Equestria already? Okay, cozy packed us all up for a trip to Bad Guy Central. Don't forget the sandwiches. I marked you to do this just in case. Starlight can't stand mustard. Wow. So sweet of you, cozy. But Twilight has asked me to stay here to run the school. I. Mm. Oh. <laughs> that after what happened last time. Once you survive Discord, everything <gasps> else is a piece of cake. <laughs> Plus. Continuity. Be the best assistant ever. Come on, we can start working on your substitute headmare plans right now if you like. <laughs> wow, uh, okay. Okay, while the cats are away, the mice will play? Tell me there's nothing to worry about. <laughs> okay, I really don't know where this is going yet, but. Professor Sparkle is away, but don't worry because she left me in charge to do things yes. just the way she wants. That concerns me. Uh, I thought Starlight Glimmer was going to be temporary head mayor. <laughs> she was, but she left me this note. I have to go. Twilight needs my help. I know the uh, school uh, has good hooves with you, Cozy. <laughs> Isn't that sweet? What did we she do to Starlight? To down, will we? No. Uh, Kind of weird, okay. isn't it? Well, I don't know what you mean. Like, why'd she change her mind? Why did Starlight write a note instead of say goodbye to us herself? Smolder, the voice of logic. Thank you. Oh, <laughs> oh Smolder, you forget. We're not scheming dragons. We're ponies. Uh, oh, now, oh. Some creature needs to do a little extra friendship homework. Oh, come on. <laughs> yeah, not yeah. either. If Smolder get homework, Yona get homework. Me too. I'm in. Yeah! <laughs> homework party! <laughs> oh, <fine>. <laughs> <laughs> Professor Rainbow Dash would be so oh, proud. Gals. You are such good friends. You all are. And I'm grateful because it will be awfully hard running a whole school alone. Can I count on each of you to help me? Yeah! <laughs> Thank you so Who much. Who is Thank she? Taught us together we can get through anything. <sighs> Whoa, the scenery. Oh. Ow. Ouch. I have had it with these horrible flies. <sighs> My magic. <laughs> have you tried using your tail to shoo them away? <clears throat> Bite your tongue. It's for decorative purposes. <laughs> <laughs> Magic to keep them cold. 
Did we go back that quickly? You don't need magic to go on a little hike. Yes, put that off, please. Oh. You were saying you just need to think more like Earth ponies, y'all. <laughs> yes. No bite, no more. That'll keep the flies off. Leave it to Applejack. They have the home remedies. Still good to eat. Um, too bad we can't hmm. do anything about the rainstorm. I can't stop that storm by myself, but I can still help. Ah, that works. I think we have all the magic we need right here. Not that I don't want to get it back. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, how long before the Pegasi lose their flight abilities? Hmm. She's the nicest pony I've ever met. I'm so glad she's head mayor. Uh, temporary head mayor, right, guys? Yeah. Oh, oh, of course. But if Twilight takes her time coming back, I won't mind. <laughs> <laughs> Background ponies get some voices. Hmm. Finally, we thought you forgot about study club. Sorry I'm late. Cozy Glow gave our class tickets to a Sapphire Shores concert in Ponyville tonight. Wow. Get the feeling Cozy Sapphire Shores. Too hard to make us like her. I haven't heard that name in a long time. She wants to help us keep our minds off of how scary it is that magic's disappearing. I don't trust her. What's she up to? No, no, you um bouncy curls. <laughs> and why Cozy Pony coming out catacombs so late at night? Oh. What have you been doing down there? Let's go ask her. I would have gone down to the catacombs, but okay. What? This is what? The only door to Tartarus. The good news is. The wow! Is what a door. So we know T-Rex didn't escape. Let me guess. You got bad news too. Last time I was here, I had to use magic to get in, and according to Star Swirl, all unicorn magic was gone by yesterday's sunset. <sighs> Maybe he was wrong. <sighs> nope. Don't worry, Twilight. Got this. What? What? There's no, there's no way. I was gonna say, if that worked. Actually <laughs> help? Hmm. These all do magic, but not the kind we're looking for. <laughs> yes. How about this? What? The key of unfettered entrance. Where did you find this, Spike? Yes. Cozy Glow must have packed it for you. She really did think of everything. Um, Are they going to get trapped in there? It, it can magically open any door. And since artifacts like this haven't lost their power yet. I guess it only works once. Yeah, apparently. Yeah, I'm very afraid that they're just going to get trapped in there and then... <laughs> the oh no! Do That's Fluttershy. season one! Wow! It'll turn you to stone. <laughs> Fluttershy, use the stair. Unless it's really bouncy stone. <laughs> oh, it's... Oh. I think he lost his magic too. All the creatures here must have. Oh, the bugbear and lots of other things we've never seen. Star Swirl said that would happen on the second day. I know it should make me feel safer, but it just makes me sad. We gotta fix this. Yeah. What is going on? Is Nase going to show up and end up being an ally on this? Oh, oh. Is Princess Twilight. Oh, God, she's away on a quest. I'm watching the school for her. Why? Why did it have to be this way? Failing across our land, and she left a foal in charge of this wait, wait, facility. Wait, yes, sir. Is there anything I can do for you? That won't be necessary. Twilight's folly stops here. She and is playing Nase. I, I knew it. I knew it. I have quite a few changes to make. Yeah. I'm positive that at this point that she's playing oh, Naysay somehow. But we'll 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 see. I'm I'm not really sure yet. I I'm, 
I know I just said I'm positive, but. Can she not talk to them anymore? But, um, we were oh, wondering so far she can. Get by to check on Tyrik. Hmm? That looks like a yes. Oh. I'll get you a towel, darling. <laughs> <laughs> he's still there and he's not involved. What have I done to earn the honor of your company? We want answers, T Rex. Magic is disappearing from Equestria. I know. What a waste of such mm, delicious power. <laughs> so you are behind this! Nope. Philly, if I had all that <laughs> magic. You think I'd still be locked up in here? Yet yeah, no. Did Nay say but somehow? I might know get... something about it. Where's Discord, by the way? What are you doing? Those are Twilight student files. These aren't. Not anymore. With Equestria under attack, ponies must stand together. Twilight has endangered us all by skipping off on friendship mm. trips. No. These dangerous creatures run loose. You don't think they're the reason magic is disappearing, do you? Yes, and I came to warn Twilight. But since she is gone, it falls to me to protect you foes okay. from these monsters. Not yeah. Too yeah, no, D Cozy is definitely not under him, but like she's... She's still got something going on here. Uh-oh. You again, as I suspected. Oh, come on! From now on, this school is pony only. Oh. As nature intended. <laughs> Since you refuse to explain your plot against Equestria and return the magic you stole, you will stay here while I summon your guardians to take you home. Wait! Why do you instantly assume they you were right did about it? Them from the beginning, Chancellor. I see that now. What are you saying? I don't want anything to do with creatures that could threaten Equestria. Wisely put, Colt. He's not defecting. He's got something up his sleeve. Every pony will come to their senses. Eventually. Hmm. I don't believe for... He just did a test of loyalty. He's he's not leaving his friends behind. It, hmm. <laughs> Ran out of apples. I need the cutie mark crusaders. My friends are in trouble. Chancellor Nase locked them up. Huh? Yes. I thought Cozy Glow was in charge. Not anymore. But you guys are good buddies. If you can convince her to distract Nase, I can break out my friends. Will you help me? Do mulberries have seeds? <laughs> That's the, yes. The, yeah, apparently. <laughs> Where's Equestria's magic going to? And is Discord going to show up here? And Trixie and whoever if else? You let me out, I'm Pillars. Sure you jog my memory. No, what no, no, we are not considering this. I scratch this. your back, you scratch mine. How about yeah. you tell us what you know, or you'll be stuck here forever because we're out of magic keys and no pony can open the door? Oh dear, I hadn't thought of that. We're just as trapped as Tyrek? Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> What a pity. Well, for you, sweet revenge for me. It seems my little protege's plan worked after all. Are you Oh, you How? Man. How did you pull this off? Each letter had so many questions about draining magic. And you answered them? Well, I was born, so I simply pointed on my pen pal in the right direction. Pen pal. Can't you just tell us your pen pal's name? I mean, since we're stuck here anyway. Mm -hmm. Oh, why not? The irony is too perfect. Her name is Cozy Glow. Yep. I I could have sworn I saw her come down this way when she left her office. Oh, the CMCs are going down here. <gasps> what is? Oh. Oh, the, the six magical artifacts. Mm, I wondered if it was going to come into play. 
going to ruin all my plans. <sighs> you might get some company soon. There's the face I've been waiting to see. That annoying naysay back off. <gasps> wow. can sure seem like forever, huh? You know, you ponies got it all wrong. What's your end game? Is it magic? Friendship is power. With Twilight and what? out of my way, all of Equestria will bow to me! The future Empress of Friendship! <laughs> Really? Really? Talk about laying it on thick. I... Mm. Alright. Well, as you guys can see, I, I held on hope as long as it, 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 it... As long as I could. That Chi wasn't behind all this. I just... I couldn't see... But... Mm, I couldn't see her being that bad. I just didn't want to for some reason. But... I was right. There is somebody behind her. I just... I think t -Rex, I actually mentioned at one point, was like, how? How could he possibly be... <sighs> I still feel like there's more going on here than meets the eye. We still don't know why Cozy Glow is doing all of this. But I'm pretty sure that my that one of my other theories is going to come true too. That the young six, these students, are going to help save the day, and uh, they're they're going to show they say the light basically show him how he got played just as badly as everybody else, and that's going to change his opinion on things here. But what's going to happen with Cozy going to? Oh, yeah, I'm I'm just going to stop yakking here and get on to the last part here so okay here we go finale part two starting now magic is disappearing all across equestria didn't we learn about a creature that eats magic some pony should investigate we'll go I thought Starlight Glimmer they say call was going to call their their guardians. Are they going to come in with reinforcements to help here somehow? My friends are in trouble. Are the other creatures magic affected by this? After all, the future Empress of Friendship. And is the Tree of Harmony going to play a part in this somehow? I'm still wondering about that. I mm, there's so many possibilities running through my head right now. I'm just Ooh. <laughs> My analyzed gear is in overdrive here. <laughs> I really hope whatever's going on that somehow things turn around for Cozy Glow here. Like, I just... Even though I'm seeing this, I still have a soft spot for her, okay? I, I can't explain why, I just do, and I don't want... I, like, I want her to see... How she was wrong and make amends for it somehow, but we'll see. <laughs> of course. A fan, ponies, training your precious world of magic so she could trap the six of you was inspiring. <laughs> How did you pull this off? Um, there's <laughs> seven of us. Oh! <laughs> yes. Yeah, well, she's a little tied up right now. No, there's there's a lot more than even seven of you. You've got friends and allies. I saw the Manticore back there. Good luck with that. Nope. Not everything can be solved with brute force. We need magic to escape. Maybe there's a way to get out without magic. Like a secret lover, or a secret button, or a secret admirer who knows a secret about you, but it's all, your secret's safe with me because I put it in Tartarus and I have a key. What? I'm afraid not. What? 
<laughs> the most villains and monsters of all time were trapped here. And without our magic, so are we. Yeah, you should have thought about that before you went in there. Uh, how does he get in and out? Unless... How did he escape back in season four? These creatures might be losing their magical powers, but there's still a magic that makes up what they are. Maybe we can borrow some of that. Oh. Uh, hmm. Excuse me? Um, Chancellor Naysay? So you can use them as batteries, basically. You might as well get used to calling me Head Stallion, they say. I've been here for quite some time. Gee, we'll see about sure that. It's a relief to have some pony in charge. What with the magical crisis going on, and we're all so grateful to you for taking care of those non-ponies. But doesn't the EEA mm -hmm. need you? What the EEA needs is some pony to protect this school from the threats at Equestria's borders, instead of gallivanting off on adventures beyond them. But you get over yourself and see her being played. She left me in charge. I'm her right hoof mayor. <laughs> Another in a long list of mistakes the princess of friendship has made. Rest assured, from now on, this school shall be run according to strict EEA guidelines. Hmm. It always should have been. Well, that sounds just peachy. <laughs> Head stallion, may say. Oh, these faces! <laughs> Hi, why? I don't know, but come on, y'all. We gotta get Starlight out of there before she comes back. Yeah, okay. Let's do this. No, 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 no! It's true. No, it's a trap! No. Oh! Oh! But if that's true, then Twilight and the others went to Tartarus for nothing. And if all of Equestria's magic's getting sucked up in there, there's no way for them to get back. We need to get help, but Starlight's trapped from here, and there's no way to Discord? get to Celestia or any pony else. I guess we're on our own. There's a window, you know, and you can fly. We gotta at least try to get out. Why? If Sambar's turned his back on us, every other pony probably has too. Sambar not turn his back! Thank Sambar you, Yona. Is our friend! Uh, did you miss the part where he said he didn't want anything to do with us? Maybe he just said that so one of us could be free to snoop around and figure out what's going on! <laughs> Thank you! Thank you, Silverstream! That's too clever for a pony to come up with. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> Nope. The one draining magic out of Equestria. What? We'll explain on the way. But right now, we gotta get the Chancellor Naysay. Huh? <laughs> I know he doesn't like non-ponies, but if we tell him what's going on, he'll help. <laughs> Bet you never thought you'd hear those words come out of his mouth. <laughs> concerned about the magic situation, but I want to assure you that this institution is safe, despite the absence of your head mayor. As your How is it safe? Italian, let me be the first to say that the reign of Princess Twilight is over. From now on, this school will adhere to EEA doctrine as it should have from the start. <sighs> Thank you, Chancellor Naysay, for that rousing speech. I know you're a stallion who truly believes what you say. Wow. And when you say the school will be run according to EEA doctrine, I know you mean it. And when you say there won't be any more lessons from the Princess of Friendship at the School of Friendship, I guess you mean that too. Huh. Oh. <laughs> but Twilight decided to run her school outside of the EEA guidelines, and even though you tried to stop her, Princesses Celestia and Luna trusted her enough to support her. Um, well, I, I wouldn't say So that... since I know you mean what you say, my question is really for the students. Are we going to give the pony who already tried to wreck Twilight School once another chance to do it? <laughs> she should be a politician! <laughs> they have to stay the way Twilight wants them, which includes leaving me in charge. Wow. Mutiny! Okay. Nice distraction, though. Maybe we need a new plan. You think? 
Yeah, I forgot about that. They were trying to get to him for help. Not too tight. We don't want to hurt the Chancellor. I'm sure Twilight will know what to do with him when she gets back. A little bit of poetic justice there, I just gotta say. We let the EEA disrupt our friendship studies long enough. Why are you doing this? I thought you wanted to have some yes. in charge. Yes. Why indeed? Oh, I do. What's with the punches? <laughs> Cozy glow merch? Okay. I can't very well have the EEA running the school if I want to run it myself. Of course. Wow. You see, if there's one thing I've learned here, it's that friendship is the most powerful thing there is. And as head mayor of the school of friendship, no pony will have more friends than me. Making me the most powerful <laughs> pony in Equestria. Chester Naysay's worst fears are being realized, but it's a pony doing it, not an outsider. Ho 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 What's so funny? Are you just happy to be running the school? Oh. Oh, I'm just keeping Twilight's seat warm. <laughs> Still, it's pretty impressive. Is there anything we can do to help? We can hang out with you all day if you want. <laughs> you know, there is something I need help with. Oh! <laughs> Okay. <laughs> yes, bust him out! <laughs> oh, he's trying to get to that artifact. Okay. I suppose you've all come to gloat? Actually, we've come to undo all these chains and free you! But, but why? Now that Nasty Why indeed? Not even nastier pony. Maybe Nasty Pony not be so nasty. <laughs> <laughs> that was amazing. We kind of like to stop Cozy before she drains all the magic from Equestria. Yeah. <laughs> She's behind that as well. I must get word to someone. Welcome to present day. <laughs> How? Without magic, it'll take forever to get to them. While it's true that unicorns have lost their ability to cast spells, the most potent magic in Equestria is housed in our artifacts. Ah. Mm -hmm. The EEA medallion allows me to travel throughout Equestria. It's magic work when I chain you up. Perhaps uh -huh. it still has enough to send me to the princesses. Oh. That's probably a one-way trip. I hope Maybe. he makes it. I hope he doesn't come back and lock us up again. <laughs> I don't think that's gonna happen. Fine. Twilight and the others are probably already on their way. Mm, now. Nah. I just want to say it's a little bit of the enemy of my enemy is my friend type of thing going on here. So. Are you sure, there's magic in Cerberus. Clarissa the pig has two tails, and while her singing voice is lovely, I don't think it's magical. Aww. We need to try everything if we want to get out of here. I don't know. Tartarus isn't so bad. I can what? hang out here for a while. Oh, the the uh uh, what's that thing called? Come here? No. I, I can't remember. But that is just what it will be. If my protege has followed my instructions, by sunset tonight, every last vestige of equestrian magic will disappear into the ether forever! What do you get out of this? What losing magic would mean? It means the six of you will be trapped here, like me! Seven! So if you exactly. can't... It means you're trapped here, mm. forever, with us. <laughs> you didn't really think this through, did you? <laughs> so, what do we do, Twilight? Dash and Applejack nearly have Cerberus tired out. If Rarity pitches in, I think they can get him to sit still long enough to try what I have in mind. I'm sure I can okay. get the other monsters to help. Besides, I would never call them monsters. What about T-Rex? He's probably got just magic too, did, right? sort of. Uh, mm. What? No! <laughs> Aww. Okay. Show Equestria that you yes. are monsters. You're wonderful, mystical creatures. I know it's not your birthday, so <laughs> you can do anything and get from one to ten, and then we'll do it all again. <laughs> yes. <laughs> hey, can't you just harness Pinky's fourth wall breaking power? We 
should have an ice cream social every day. Perfect. That's a Perfect. splendid idea, Apple Bloom. But to tell you the truth, the thing I need help with most is cleaning. Say no more. Just take us around the school and show us everything you want cleaned. Well, actually, you could start right in here. Don't fall for that. It looks pretty clean already. Do you three think you can fool me? I know a diversion when I see it. Oh. <laughs> yeah, how, how did you get let yourselves get trapped that easily? I mm. can't handle cozy on her own. But we can't just sit around and wait for help. So, there's one more prisoner I think we should free. Oh, I guess Starlight is it Starlight. <laughs> yeah, Silverstream, it's Starlight. No, Yona, no. No. She can't talk to us from in there. We'll have to figure a way to get her out. You can just destroy the artifacts or remove them somehow? Hey, this is just like chapter 12 in Kentakis Facts and Artifacts from Twilight's class. Is this going to be new elements of harmony? <laughs> well, we study. Finals are coming up, you know? Actually, thank you, Gals. Thank you. Too. Cozy must have linked these artifacts to act like a mystical magnet, attracting all the magic in Equestria into that orb. <laughs> Probably cause a magical feedback loop and destroy the whole school. Destroy the school. Well, let's not do that quite yet. Oh uh oh. Alright. Is you know you don't ready? don't have a lot of options left. Just yank the artifacts. Okay, I'm getting Dragon Ball Z vibes here again. Ugh. That's it. I think it's working. Okay, is it enough? Yes! Yes, yes! Come on! You should have all been ready to leave. Oh, they all. Oh, wow! So they were almost like sort of corrupted by magic, or that's interesting. I couldn't have done it without all your help. I'm not sure we did. Uh oh. No. Derek said all of Equestria's magic would be gone at sunset. Without magic, oh, no. there's no way we'll get back to the school in time. What does that mean? Is Nase gonna pull off a miracle here, or what? I, I never thought I'd say that. <laughs> I mean, the princess has got to have some pretty awesome magic artifacts at their disposal. Though. You're the one using these artifacts to drain magic from Equestria. Me? We all just saw you with your claws all over them. <gasps> it all makes sense. These creatures want magic gone from Equestria because it's the only thing Cozy had that they don't. Technically, there's a magical component when Silverstream and I transform. And Yona's friend's friendship is magic. Twilight said. And you repaid her by sending her to Tartarus on a wild goose chase so you could destroy everything. You did that! Oh, they've even trapped Starlight in that, that thing! We <laughs> have I love the glare. <laughs> the, the rolling eyes there. <sighs> Come on. Ooh. Oh! Oh, they're all gonna go. What is. I'm expecting Tree of Harmony to show up any moment here. Oh no. They just sacrifice themselves trying to save their friend. Professor Dash always says there's nothing more loyal than us. Yes. yes. We try to save them. They brought this on themselves. There's nothing we can do. That doesn't seem very generous. Or no. Good. Yeah, yeah. The They've been learning. Harmony are very important. They're just not applicable in every circumstance. And with magic gone from Equestria, De mm. from Tria, Harmony will be as helpful as it once was. What? What? what, what oh! 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 Yes! 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 What's yes! Yes! They're glowing like the elements. Yes! 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 Yes!
magical after all. Hurry, grab the artifacts! Yes, please do that! Um, didn't you say that could destroy the school? D -d -d out of time, just do it! Magic forever. You all better get clear! Come on! Whoa! Oh! Yes! Oh. <laughs> yes! Teleport! Yes! Yeah, hug. everything. Now Twilight and her ridiculous <laughs> friends can escape from Turnerus. Yeah, your plan is pretty much over. <laughs> I mean, yay! All my friends are safe. <laughs> yeah, it's not going to work anymore. Act, cozy glow. Your pen pal T Rick told us all about how he helped you suck up all that magic. But I still don't understand why. <sighs> why? You <laughs> friendship. The stink eye. You might be the princess of friendship, but as head mayor of this school, I can collect even more friends than you. That's not oh. how friendship sure works. Doesn't get it, Cozy. Friendship is powerful, but power isn't why you make friends. I'm sorry I couldn't teach you that. Well, you taught us. You can't let one bad apple make you think you failed. Yes. And we never could have stopped her if we hadn't learned what you taught us about friendship. Honesty, loyalty, generosity, blah blah blah. They're not the same scenes are still locked in the closet, aren't they? Any of them. And if I can't do it here, I'll do it somewhere else. Yeah, yeah no. Think so. You can end up in Tartarus. Oh. <laughs> the girl put is actually did something. <laughs> I'm glad you are back in charge of the School of Friendship, Princess. Yes, 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 yes. It's clear to me now that there is no pony better suited for the job. <laughs> Graduation day! <laughs> What's going on? Hi, Edmure Twilight! We're just practicing for graduation! <laughs> graduation? Hmm? Now that we've saved Equestria, we figure we're done with school. Wow. <laughs> uh, mm -mm. Saving Equestria is nice, but I'm afraid it'll take more than one semester to learn all there is to know about friendship. <gasps> I told you. <ya. laughs> <laughs> Your head mayor is right. I thought friendship was something that only ponies should share with each other. You all taught me how wrong I was. I suppose true friendship can take a lifetime to understand. If it were easy to learn, we wouldn't need a school. Oh, uh, we held her off as long as we could. <laughs> it's it's it. What happened? Is everything all right? Where's Cozy Glow? <laughs> She's gone. Everything worked out just fine. As for Cozy Glow, I can assure you, where she's going, she won't be causing any more trouble. She's gonna get stuck in the cage with Tyrek. <laughs> yes! 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 Of course, it's boring here now. But at least you're not in a cage. Oh. <laughs> hey, neighbor. Want to be friends? <sighs> Why do I get the feeling we're not going to be done with her that we have not seen the last of Cozy Glow. I, hmm. Because, hey, we didn't see the last of T-Rick either, obviously. I, okay, here, here's the thing. I still have questions. We still don't really know anything about Cozy Glow. Where did she come from? Why is she so hungry for power? Where where did this all come from? I, mm, I'm definitely going to have to let 
all of this just like marinate and process here for for a while before I, I, I come back to this. But uh, just sit tight, guys. For you guys, I will be right back in just a moment. All right, everyone, grab some snacks. This is going to be a long one. The real Season 8 villain has finally been revealed. It really was Cozy Glow all along. How does she rate? In my opinion, best MLP villain ever. Previously, I thought Tyrick was the best villain in MLP. You know, his goal of pure domination and the speed at which he pulled it off were quite impressive, in my opinion. And the way in which he robbed his enemies of their magic just completely eliminated them as a threat, while also powering himself up even more. You know, and he didn't really seem to waste a lot of time monologuing either. I mean, there were some, but mostly he just showed up and started stealing magic and wrecking everything. And there was seemingly no stopping him until, like, the very, very end. You now, Cozy Glow's methods obviously were a bit different, but, uh, actually a lot different, but she effectively almost accomplished the same thing as T-Rex in terms of completely eliminating magic as a threat against her. And even though she lacked his magic power, she plotted and schemed and found a way to use these magic artifacts to her advantage as a great equalizer, and then relied on her powers of psychological manipulation to gain an army of allies. The way that she so well hid her true self from everyone else for so long was really amazing. And obviously there's clues to us that we were supposed to pick up on and whatever and keep us guessing, and they did for a lot of us, but anyway. But how evil is she really? I mean, yeah, at this point it seems like she is just flat out pure evil of the highest caliber. But is that just what we're supposed to think for right now? Here's the thing, we are not done with Cozy Glow, not in the least. We still have not gotten any backstory for her, no reason or explanation for what she did whatsoever. Twilight asked her why she did it, and her answer didn't reveal anything new in this regard. And the way things were, were left with her right there at the end makes it blindingly obvious that she is uh, you know, going to be out for some kind of revenge over this whole thing. I think the problem is that if the writers had revealed any such details about her, it would have spoiled what's still yet to come, so they conveniently avoided those details. Still though, without any details about her motivation, it's hard to know exactly what she's planning. I mean, even now. So I mean, it seems like her entire plan just fell apart, and now we don't. she's got a backup plan, don't really know what that is, but I got some ideas, but... Anyway, now, I have been going around in circles exploring all kinds of wild theories about Cozy Glow, with some of the most interesting ones being that she is not even actually a pony, some other creature in disguise, uh, sort of, somehow. Not a changeling, that doesn't make any sense, but, you know, there's lots of magic abilities for disguise and transformation and whatever out there, you know, with artifacts, if nothing else. Now, I was kind of on board with that for a while, but the more I thought about it, the more it just doesn't really make any sense. Uh, what actually makes the most sense is actually my original assessment of Cozy Glow. But wait, you might say, didn't you? You know, didn't I say that Cozy Glow wasn't evil? Uh, yes, yes, I did, and that's exactly why it makes so much sense. <laughs> but now I'm sure I've lost you, so allow me to try and explain the, this whole thing. At the beginning of all this, lots of people thought she was evil and had been right from the start. Unfortunately, the events of the season seem to suggest otherwise. To start with, Cozy Glow used these six magic artifacts from the six different creature nations in order to drain all the magic from the world, or at least all of Equestria. Those artifacts didn't even show up at the school until A Matter of Principles, episode 14, the middle of the season, where, where Twilight had said that they had been gifted to the school by Princess Celestia. Cozy Glow was already at the school before then, as, uh, as she showed up in Marks for Effort in uh, episode 12. Also, she had already been at Twilight School for an unknown amount of time before that, because at the point she met the CMCs, she was already taking classes and you know, working on the homework and stuff. Uh, so, you know, e even if she knew what those artifacts were capable of, how could she possibly know that they would so conveniently show up at Twilight School? Also, going back to Marks for Effort, there were several problems in regards to the CMCs. If she already had a master plan underway at the school, why did she need to involve the CMCs for anything? If she didn't actually need any help with the, her, her homework, there really wouldn't have been any reason to involve them in the first place. 
they weren't part of the school at that point and I don't really buy the idea that she just needed them to establish her image at the school because clearly she's good enough at manipulation to do that without them. Also, why would she have needed to pretend to not know anything about friendship to begin with? Assuming she did have an evil plan underway, but was legitimately failing at the lessons, which would have jeopardized her position in the school and her ability to accomplish her goal, wouldn't it have made much more sense for her to just ask the teachers for extra tutoring? Uh, also, if she really didn't understand enough about friendship to even pass the classes, how would she even known that, known in the first place that it was a power strong enough to be worth pursuing with such fervor? So just, you know, a whole lot of things that don't add up to her being in the, that position at that point. Now, you could argue that she uh, did legitimately need help with friendship lessons, but was just being very careful about revealing you know, too much to the main six. So she used the CMCs to avoid any unnecessary complications. That sort of makes sense, but that also has problems. If she just needed their help to... Uh, sorry, scrolling. If she just needed their help to pass the test, why did she fail her own test to try and help them out? I honestly don't really see any reason why we should... why she would have needed to do this. And uh, also, she actually felt bad when she got them into trouble. Go back and watch the scene where Twilight was dismissing the CMCs from her office after chewing them out over allegedly leading Cozy Glow astray. Cozy Glow was hidden back around a corner watching this all play out, and neither Twilight nor the CMCs saw her, but yet she had this sad, worried look on her face and says, oh no, like she really felt bad about uh, you know getting them in trouble. If that whole thing had been part of her evil scheme, she would have been chuckling and grinning to herself, not looking sad and worried, especially in a private setting like that. You know, and, and honestly, even her confession about this whole thing to Starlight, to me, felt rather genuine. And she also looked genuinely happy when the CMCs were forgiven and given their diplomas and everything. It's like, yeah, I've got my friends back. So, no, I, I don't really think she was truly up to anything right at that point. Now, it is true that when she first arrived, she was acting a bit suspiciously. She was painting a really good sob story for the CMCs, kind of laying it on thick there, and, you know, threatening to move away and, and all that. You know, it really did feel like she was trying to coax some help out of them. But then when they freely offered their services, it appeared to catch Cozy Glow a bit off guard, and she suspiciously asked them what was in it for them. That behavior, along with her ignorance, or seeming ignorance, of all the basic concepts of friendship, really led me to believe that everyone uh, or that, that this was the result of growing up in a bad place where nobody was friendly, rather everyone just manipulated others into helping them and never offered any help of their own unless the, uh, they were playing some kind of angle. You know, friendship was likely viewed as a weakness and without benefit and everyone just sought to obtain power which is viewed as the only real way to get ahead in life. We've actually seen examples of this in some places like the Dragonlands and Griffinstone. It's kind of hard to imagine a place like this actually existing in Equestria, but it's not honestly all that much of a stretch if you think about it. You know, Equestria is a great place and all, but it's certainly not a utopia. As, you know, the, I mean, we've seen plenty of shady characters all over the place throughout the course of this show. You know, Manhattan even has police ponies, which suggests there are regular troublemakers there that have to be dealt with. And there's also several cities we've never even seen in this world that have been named, but just never seen them. So. I would say it's entirely possible that there are parts of Equestria where life for ponies isn't so great as it is in places like Ponyville. And for that matter, we honestly don't even know... Uh, we, we don't know anything about Cozy Glow. We don't know where she's from. It, was she raised by somebody outside of Equestria? I mean, we don't even know that. That's a bit of a stretch, but it's a possibility. But anyway, as I said months ago when we first met Cozy Glow, I think she just came from some kind of a bad neighborhood and wasn't so much evil as she was misunderstood and just practicing the bad habits that she'd learned as she grew up. Now, obviously, she went full dark side somewhere along the way, uh, but given everything I've established so far, I think I might... I think I see what might have happened. Let's assume for the moment that all my theories are correct here and that she didn't arrive at the school with an evil plan already in motion or even any intention of launching this evil scheme to take control of everything. Perhaps she uh, it, you know, hated the environment she was growing up in and wanted a way out to find a better life. Maybe she heard about the opening of Twilight School and saw it as a way to escape. 
uh, you know, upon enrolling, she quickly got in over her head because due to her upbringing, the core concepts of friendship were all completely foreign to her. Uh, fearing she was losing her only chance to get away from her past and being a young filly, she not surprisingly needed a place to go vent some emotions and ended up out in the woods by the CMC's treehouse. And of course, by chance, she encountered the CMC's there and automatically went into this little manipulation mode thing out of habit. You know, she then got a serious dose of real friendship from their willingness to help her. As they helped her with her assignments and studies, she found herself with her first friends ever, basically. And since they had so graciously helped her, she decided to take, a, take some of what she had learned and try to return the favor by helping them achieve their own goal of attending the school. Uh, of course, she only knew how to do this by her means of manipulation. That's all she had known up to that point. So when that backfired, suddenly she found herself with a conscience and felt bad for getting them in trouble. And after confessing her misdeeds to Starlight and resolving the situation, she was then able to resume her normal studies at the school. I feel like that's basically the setup for all this. Uh, but of course, her past was still there to haunt her, and as she progressed through her studies, learning about friendship and how its power aided the main six and all their heroic adventures, she came to realize just how powerful this friendship really is. She realized that all the others she grew up around who had wanted power had been missing out on the greatest form of power in all of Equestria. Now, you know, keep in mind, if my theory is true about her past, she grew up in a place where it was believed that the only path to success was to obtain power over others. The possibility of acquiring a, a true power was probably too much of a temptation for her, and she began seeking a way to acquire more and more friends, and thus become more powerful herself. She said at the, at the end here, in, in the finale, that she wanted to obtain even more friends than Twilight, and thus, you know, would become the most powerful pony in all of Equestria. Just seems, you know, she, she didn't provide any explanation as to why she wanted this power, or what she would do with it once she had obtained it, but keeping her age in mind, I get the feeling she never really thought that far ahead, you know, I mean, it just, you know, was focused on this here, and lacking a little bit of maturity to, you know, think about things that far ahead. Was either that, or maybe she just wanted the, the power to get back at everyone who had mistreated her back wherever she grew up. It's really hard to say. In any case, by giving in to this temptation, uh, her sole purpose at the school became to find a way to get friends in order to become powerful. She didn't want to take the time to learn how to make friends the right way. She just wanted the power right now. Now granted, she was rather patient for it, but still, it's like, I, you know, she was rushing ahead and not really learning truly what friendship was about and this this power this desire for power blinded her to to that and she you know, she started on her journey uh, of a blah. she started her journey down a path of darkness i can't read now her studies obviously showed how important the role of magic was in the main six exploits uh, as and as a pegasus she didn't have magic powers of her own so she probably realized she would need to get rid of magic in order to level the playing field as well as eliminate most of the threats that could actually stop her. Now, her studies obviously would have contained all kinds of information about, uh, you know, magical abilities and stuff like, well, about, like, about T-Rex, how, um, how he almost succeeded, succeeded in draining all the magic out of everyone in Equestria. So she began communicating with him to help um, get help in figuring out how to get rid of all the magic. You know, once again, she's not a unicorn, and the only magic she herself could utilize is these magic artifacts. At the school, we know that she already had uh, um, already had access to study the various magic artifacts that they had on hand, including the ones that she ultimately used for this magic magnet. However, she needed time to study and experiment with them without prying eyes. In order to do that, she needed to create some distractions. Now, the first big distraction came in the form of Friendship University. Assuming that uh, what was implied in the episode is true, and that she was, in fact, the one that leaked the copy of Twilight's textbook to Flim and Flam, that was the perfect distraction. With everything she had learned at the school, she would have most certainly heard about Flim, the Flim Flam brothers from Applejack. She knew that they would jump at the chance to run a highly profitable scam, and she knew that Twilight would have to go deal with that situation in order to defend her school's reputation. That probably gave her some quality time to study and experiment with the artifacts. Uh, it likely also resulted in increased enrollment in Twilight School in the end, after the fake school shut down, so that just gave her more ponies that she could end up <laughs> manipulating. 
Um, but wait, how could all of that happen so quickly? Well, remember the artifacts showed up in episode 14. And Friendship University was episode 16. And in between, we had the Hearthwarming Club. It would seem that the entire winter holiday season passed between those other two episodes, which itself suggests a significant passage of time. So that, in theory, would have given Flim and Flam plenty of time to get their school up and running and run it for long enough to Twilight uh, for Twilight to then find out about it. So that that all kind of makes sense there. But yeah, big distraction opportunity. Now moving forward to what lies beneath in episode 22, the next notable appearance of Cozy Glow. Uh, by this time, she's probably done all the research that she needs, has got the artifacts figured out and stuff, has a game plan, but she needs some place to actually set up and launch the attack. She then discovers the catacombs under the school and realizes it's the perfect place to do it. This explains why she was so freaked out when the young six said that they were going to go tell Twilight and the others about these catacombs and their adventure with the tree, you know, as that would have immediately compromised that site. As for why she began driving a wedge between the young six, you know, I, I would to that I would say again the name of the game is distraction and manipulation. Perhaps she knew just how good friends they actually were and knew that they could be a threat, uh, so she needed to find a way to keep them focused on their own problems while she advanced her own agenda. She probably also know uh, knew that they, as the focal point of the controversy surrounding the the school, Chancellor Nase and the EEA and everything could potentially serve as a way for her to unite all the Pony students to her side if necessary. You know, basically make them scapegoats. Which is kind of what happened right at the end there a little bit. Before she overplayed her hand. <laughs> so yeah, and that, that, that brings us up to the finale. She launched her attack and then misdirected and distracted everyone in order to buy time for the magic drain process to complete. By the time anyone realizes what's going on, unicorn magic is already gone and creatures are losing their magic abilities. She, sent the, she sends the main six to Tartarus to confront T-Rex, providing them with a one-way ticket in for that one-use artifact, a magic artifact, which was, at that point, about the only thing still working magic-wise. And by trapping them there, they wouldn't be able to threaten her position at the school, and she would be free to assume control. Now, of course, Nase and the young six also got in her way, and she started losing her cool a little bit, but she was able, uh, even able to handle them by turning the student body against both of those parties. And the best thing about this whole situation is that nobody, except for the main six, who are now trapped in Tartarus, really had a clue as to what was even going on. He really had everybody guessing on this. I mean, the, the old Starlight would indeed be very proud of the deviousness of her entire plan. Oh, I should say Starlight actually knew about the plan too, but she was a little bit uh, trapped and not able to do anything about it. So. And I just have to pause here and mention, uh, yeah, the, the CMCs. I was so happy to finally see them in a season finale to get to take part in, you know, these big epic events. But what was the point? Why did they have to go and get hit with the stupid stick? <laughs> I mean, pretty much all they did was get themselves locked in a closet, like, immediately. Which, you know, at least one of them should have seen coming a mile away since they were already fully aware that Cozy Glow was evil. I guess they, they did also aid in breaking out the rest of the Young Six from that dorm room, but... Eh, I think Sandbar could have probably pulled that off himself, in, in all honesty. Uh... Well, oh, and, and uh, there is one thing I need to mention that was a bit of a head-scratcher. Uh, when Sandbar went to uh, get the help with the CMCs and found Apple Bloom, how did she immediately know that Cozy Glow was in charge? She says, oh, I thought Twilight left Cozy Glow in charge. Uh, you know, after all, Starlight was supposed to be the one who was in charge in the main six's absence, and you'd think, you know, Applejack would have told her about that. Uh, my explanation is that Cozy Glow... Uh, you know, read that fake note at the school that stated that Twilight needed Starlight's help all of a sudden and that she wanted Cozy Glow to be in charge. Uh, yeah, and that said, no, the CMCs weren't there to hear that that we saw, but word tends to travel fast in such a small town as Ponyville, especially in the middle of a major crisis. So it's not, you know, it might have been a writing slip, but honestly it's not that unbelievable to th realize that that information could have very quickly traveled around. I mean, the school is a big focal point of the town too, so any big changes in the school, I'm willing to bet ponies hear about it. But anyway, back on the main topic. Uh, yes, Cozy Glow nearly pulled off the impossible, but she made one critical mistake. 
because she never really learned the true meaning of friendship, she completely underestimated just how powerful it truly is when used properly. Now, of course, you know, um, harmony and the elements of harmony played a key role in this as well. You know, Kozigul made a comment about how it's unlikely that the Tree of Harmony could even help much because of all the magic in Equestria was basically gone now. I think she may have skipped a chapter in the uh, history books there. I mean, let's take a look back at Season 4. Tyrek had succeeded in completely draining all the magic out of all ponies to the point where they lost their cutie marks and all special abilities of any kind, including flight. He had also drained Discord's magic, which itself is insanely powerful. And uh, all of that was added to his own inherent magic power. You know, and um, in this situation, Discord was nowhere to be seen. And this slow magic drain did not affect Cutie Marks or Pegasi Flight, or even things like Pinky's fourth wall breaking, Fluttershy's ability to communicate with creatures, etc. I thought all that stuff was going to disappear. We didn't quite get that far. You know, and even Cel Celestia and Luna were still able to move the sun and moon, which I personally feel like is a little bit of a oops in the writing, because that has always been magic-based from what we've seen. But this also does kind of support my theory that those abilities of theirs are based on some kind of special connection with the sun and moon that is above and beyond, like, basic unicorn-type magic. Uh, but that's another discussion for another day. Uh, oh, and of course, the, uh, the the seemingly powerless creatures in Tartarus still had enough residual magic to uh, magic power to give Twilight a one-shot spell to open the gates of Tartarus so they could escape. You know, basically, it seems like everyone retained at least a l very low level of residual magic. You know, n not enough to really do much of anything of significance, though, in terms of counterattack. But you know, combined together, it could you know be used as a last-ditch effort for one thing. The point I'm trying to make here is that this is nowhere near as complete of a magic drain as what Tyrik had pulled off. And even back then, the power of the elements of the harmony was such that all of Tyrik's stolen power you know, still couldn't even put a scratch in the main six. And, uh, and harmony has only grown more powerful since then. Now there, uh, her, her magic drain may have been impressive for someone in her position, uh, Kozigo, but she drastically underestimated the power of harmony and the elements. There was just no way that that drain could have sapped the magic of the elements. And there was no way that harmony was about to let all that magic be tossed into another realm. I mean, that would have thrown the entirety of Equestria itself into complete chaos. And also, Harmony knows just how dangerous it could be to send Equestrian magic to other realms. <coughs> Equestria realms! <coughs> but just to note, the magic of the elements wasn't even used to directly stop Cozy Glow's attack. It just pulled the Young Six back out of the trap so that they could pull the artifacts and reverse the magic drain. What really stopped Cozy's attack was the friendship of the Young Six. Their act of self-sacrifice caused the rest of the students to question who was actually on what side, and and then Cozy Glow also got sloppy there since she thought that her victory was imminent, and she revealed that she didn't really believe that the elements were actually applicable in every situation, which is quite contrary to what they had all been taught at this school. So that was really the, the big turning point, the big reveal there. Now, all that said, if my theory is anywhere near correct, and Cozy Glow didn't actually start out totally evil, and she simply succumbed to this, the temptation of obtaining this power, then I can honestly see a path for her to still you know, get reformed at some point down, down the road. And I will be very happy if that happens, but I also believe it's going to be uh, going to end up getting a lot worse before it gets better. She showed no remorse for her actions at all, as of yet. And, you know, not, I mean, the, the only time we saw, her, like, seemingly genuine remorse from her was when she appeared to feel bad about getting the CMCs in trouble way back in Marks for Effort. Uh, and, uh, and then also she, she said she would find new friends without using any of the lessons that she'd learned at this school. You know, without any of the elements of harmony or anything. That can only mean that she's now looking for the wrong kind of friends. And it appears as though she's already found such a friend in Tyrek. Of course, it appears that this is now setting the stage for what's to come in Season 9. You know, and she didn't seem to be very upset at all about ending up in Tartarus, so I'm pretty sure she already has a backup plan in motion, and will be finding some way out of there, presumably with Tyrek in tow. Also, uh, Chrysalis is out there looking for options at this point. 
you know, a Chrysalis may be a bit short in the knowledge and intelligence department, but she has magic power at her disposal. Really powerful magic power. And her power plus cozy scheming abilities could be quite the potent combination. Uh, of course, it's, you know, it's hard to believe that she would actually want to work with a team. I mean, she's always been a loner. All the villains have kind of been loners. But I think that might be about to change. I think we're going to see a coalition of villains being formed here in Season 9. Sort of Equestria's very own Legion of Doom. You know, we've we've seen a lot of villains come and go, but we just we've never seen an actual villain team up before. Uh, you know, I'm not I'm not sure who, uh, who else might show up in all of this, but there's only about a dozen different ways they could actually write Sombra back into the show if they wanted to. And I'm also beginning to wonder if somehow Nightmare Moon and Daybreaker might end up uh, reappearing. You know, and uh, and just to throw out another bit of a stretch, not so much of a stretch. I'm also going to be very surprised if Grogar does not end up making an appearance here. You know, he's the only seemingly really serious villain from Gen 1 that still has yet to make an appearance in Gen 4. But yet he's been mentioned uh, in Gen 4 in that storybook that Twilight was reading back in a flurry of emotions in Season 6. Now, thinking about this other realm that Cozy Glow was going to send this magic to, I'm kind of wondering if that realm was Tamblon which is the realm that Grogar is trapped in back in Gen 1. You know, I said, and maybe some of the magic, you know, the, the magic was starting to descend through that portal. Maybe a little bit of that magic actually did make its way through to that realm, thus giving Grogar the power to return once again. You know, and may, maybe he'll be the one to come back and, uh, you know, I mean, Tyrit probably knows him since they were from that same era and, and everything, and maybe he's the one to finally, you know, draw all the others together and combine their efforts. Really hard to say. You know, again, it's, that's definitely a bit of a, a stretch, more like fanfic territory at this, at this point, but I think the possibility is there. Especially with all the Gen 1 and older Gen references we've been starting to get <laughs> in, as, as of late. Uh, but in any case, the stage now certainly seems set for the huge conflict that I've been predicting for some time now, and I can't wait to see what Season 9 will bring in this regard. Oh, and in case you're wondering, uh, I have no problem whatsoever with Cozy Glow's current punishment of being locked away in Tartarus. You know, it seems she really didn't think that through, actually, uh, think through this whole problem, since without magic the entire ecosystem would have fallen into chaos without any ability to change the seasons and such, among other things. Uh, but, yeah, she went to extreme lengths, you know, to to take control of everything and didn't seem the least bit remorseful there at the end. You know, and I, I'm not going to say she's beyond turning over a new leaf. I still want to see her do that. But for the moment, due to what she did and threatened to do, she must be considered a threat to Equestria and treated as such. Uh, also, now that we've had a good look at Tartarus, we can see that it's basically just a prison with a magically sealed you know, door and lock, not exactly a torture chamber or anything like that. And I'm assuming the, the individual cages you know, um, within Tartarus also suppress the occupants' magic powers to prevent them from escaping or causing any other mischief while they're down there. Uh, and don't forget that the place even has amenities like regular mail service, apparently. Um, yeah, funny thing about that, isn't there some kind of a warden or somebody who scans all mail correspondence in and out? Like, real jails? It seems like a big gaping hole in security here when you allow inmates in jail to teach others outside of prison how to do the same evil deeds they did. Uh, yeah, bit of an oops, They're just a little oops in the writing, I, I, I feel like. Uh, convenient plot device, maybe, but... Anyway, um, hopefully that's something they will address now so that it, it doesn't happen again. Um, and uh, that I will say, I did have a wild theory that maybe, you know, Cozy had actually been planning this for a long, long time. And she had actually corresponded with T-Rex back when he had escaped from Tartarus several seasons ago. As opposed to mailing him, you know, in actual Tartarus. But I, I basically disproved that own theory. That, and that, that's far too much of a stretch, so... Anyway, so yeah, hopefully they will fix that mail service thing. Now, to switch gears a little bit here, let's talk about the elements of harmony for a little bit. I've said many times in the past that I believe there to be seven elements. I've also said that I believe the tree of harmony to be sentient, and that harmony herself may very well be the seventh element. 
Um, this explains where the seventh geode came from in the Equestrian Girls world, because it's presumed that Harmony herself sent the geodes, and since she herself isn't present directly in that world, they would have needed all seven ele elements in order for that power to be complete. I would also like to point out that num the number seven was greatly emphasized in this finale. Uh, when Tyrek mentioned the group of uh, the, you know, the main six when they were uh, confronting him in Tartarus, Spike pointed out that there are actually seven of them. And at first, I thought he meant Starlight, because uh, that's you know they made a big deal before about she's part of the group now. But I think he might have actually been talking about he himself. There were seven of them there, all you know doing this together. And then later, while still in Tartarus, Tyrek again said six, and Rainbow Dash corrected him with great emphasis by yelling seven. You know, major emphasis on seven. And one last thing. Uh, this is a bit that was not quite so obvious at first glance. Way back at the beginning of the finale, when Silverstream was working on a crossword puzzle in the library at the school, she needed a seven-letter word for teamwork, which ended up being synergy. So yeah, it seems like there's a continuing theme of the number seven here. Now, it's no secret that I've been looking for ways to make Starlight the seventh element, because I think she deserves it, and I think and think she would fit the role of empathy just as well as Sunset Shimmer. You know, I said, well, but what if she's going to be one of the elements, but in a different way? In this finale, we saw, for the first time ever, the elements of Harmony interacting with beings other than the main six. And yes, Celestia and Luna used elements in the past, but they were more in their generic form back then. You know, since bonding with the main six and taking the form of their cutie marks, the elements have not been really usable by anyone else, unless you count Sunset Shimmer, which I don't feel really counts for various reasons. I mean, because she was kind of destined to be one of the element bearers herself, and I, I think there's other extenuating circumstances there. Anyway, not going to waste a whole lot of time on that, but... Basically, it's been pretty exclusive to the main six, because, you know, clearly it's bonded with them, transformed to match their cutie marks, etc. And, um, and Princess Celestia herself even said back in Season 2 that she and Luna can no longer use the elements because they no longer have a connection with them. So that seems to solidify the idea that these are exclusive to the main six. So, uh, yeah, having the magic of the elements extended to the young six is an unprecedented event. Of course, it's really no surprise, given that we saw Harmony herself testing the students down in the catacombs recently, but it's still a huge deal. Now, if you take a look at the element aura colors that envelop the young six, you'll see that they actually match the, uh, the aura colors of the main six, proving this is, in fact, the uh, magic of the elements of Harmony. And this uh, pastel rainbow of pink, light blue, yellow, orange, white, and magenta... Um, uh, has been in use since the rainbow powers were f uh, first unlocked during the battle against T-Rex back in season four. The same color palette was then used in the rainbow attack at the end of Rainbow Rocks uh, against the Sirens, uh, with one notable addition: the red color, which is now Sunset's geode color. Every time we've seen the element or colors used since those events, the color palette has been quite persistent. Those colors were even reflected in the pieces of wood that the Mean Six were made out of. Uh, uh, it, you know, after ugh, and finish my thought. Yeah, those those, those pieces of wood the mean, mean six were made out of after Harmony rejected their influence and melted the the evil clones, just leaving behind those chunks of wood. Of course, with all the emphasis on the number seven in this finale, we only saw the aura colors of the main six, not the red color of the seventh element, which of course was a bit disappointing. Of course, assuming Harmony herself to be the seventh element, this does actually make sense. But, I would like to point out that right in the middle of the Young Six during that whole incident was none other than Starlight Glimmer, who seems like a shoe in for the Seventh Element. Ever since uh, Harmony first manifested in What Lies Beneath, I've had this nagging feeling that we are going to see something devastating happen to the Tree of Harmony before this entire story is done. I have also theorized that the only way someone in Equestria can become the seventh element bearer is if Harmony has to sacrifice herself for some reason. Now, Chrysalis already tried to abuse the power of the elements, so their safety is now definitely in question. Also, Tyrek and Cozy Glow kind of have a bone to pick with Harmony since she effectively ruined both of their plans in a similar way. 
I'm really thinking at this point that this coalition of evil that I'm predicting will now focus their attacks on the tree, since it's basically been the source of power for practically every world-saving event that's occurred in, in Equestria. Almost. And if the tree dies, and thus Harmony herself, perhaps her final act will be to pass on all of her power to a new generation of element bearers, one that can unite all the creature races together in Harmony. The Young Six and Starlight certainly seem to be the perfect ones to become this next generation. Of course, this is all just a theory, but I'd like to think it's a pretty good one. <laughs> and uh, now we just have to survive another hiatus to see if that, any of that actually comes true. And no, I have not forgotten about Chancellor Naysay. That said, I really don't have too much to say about him. Uh, you know, he just didn't stand out very much as the... the uh, Well, yeah, basically I pretty much predicted the way that he would turn around... Uh, you know, earlier this season. It, it, he just didn't stand out as the arch-villain type, but rather just an individual whose heart was in the right place, but was misguided and unfairly judging of others. It only made sense that the students he hated so much would come to his rescue, and end up completely changing his mind about them. Of course, it certainly didn't hurt to have his entire worldview shattered when it was a pony that ended up being the one to commit the very act of treachery that he had feared. Once he got past this silly notion that only ponies could responsibly use such a powerful force as friendship, then he was able to see that it's not who you are or where you come from that determines whether or not you will abuse such a power, but rather the character of the individual wielding that power. Friendship is a very powerful force indeed, but it's not really meant to be used as a weapon. Uh, rather, it's, it's a tool that helps us support and protect one another and allows us to stand firm in defense against the vicious attacks of those who would uh, who do uh, wish harm upon others united we stand divided we fall and basically uh, without friendship there is no hope but with true friends by our side we can weather the worst that life can throw at us and it's when life is at its worst that we need to rely on our friends more than ever to see us through the dark times the young six understand this and that's largely why I think they are so deserving of being element bearers themselves. You know, they, they have stuck by each other's sides since the beginning of, of the season, and you know, supporting and standing up for each other. Their loyalty was on full display here, especially with Sandbar when he tricked Nese into letting, you know, unchaining him so he could go and try to find some help. Their kindness and generosity showed in the way that they were so willing to forgive and even help Chenso and Nese after everything he had tried to do to shut down their school. I mean, they still have a lot to learn, but in some ways, I see the friendship of the Young Six as being even stronger than that of the Main Six. Just an absolutely fantastic group of characters that we've got here, and I can't wait to see more from them. But for right now, that's basically a wrap. The season, was, uh, season is now over, and we have just presumably one more, uh, one more to go following a hiatus. I'm not entirely sure what to expect, especially for the episode 200, uh, but it, if it is truly the last season of Gen 4, then I'm sure it's going to be epic. As for this season overall, uh, it was a very good season. You know, not the best, mind you. I had some issues with it, but still very good. You know, Lots of memorable moments, tons of great new characters, an unprecedented level of continuity on the part of the writing team, which I very much applaud. And you know, For me personally, season 7 currently is still the one to beat for many reasons, but I definitely have very much enjoyed this uh, this season as well. And now it is time to endure another hiatus. And yes, I know the, the Holly Special is coming up very soon, and I will yes, I will be reacting to that as well, and I still have a lot of uh, Quester Girls uh, content to catch up on, granted, uh, but I'm definitely looking forward to a bit of a break though. So, And I got Cider Fest just right around the corner here, so looking forward to that as well. Yeah, that's that's the season all wrapped up now, and I just want to say thank you to all my fans and everyone who have been watching this through with me. I hope you've enjoyed uh, my hearing all my thoughts and everything this on, on these episodes and stories this season. I'm hoping during the hiatus I will actually have some time to go back and actually start reading through some of the comments on my videos now that I'm not so worried about spoilers and everything, but you guys have left me 
thousands upon thousands of comments, so it's going to be a little tough to get through. So we'll we'll see. I, I won't make any promises, but I will try to at least read through some of those. But anyway, I need to go now. So again, thanks everyone for watching, and hopefully I'll see you again very soon for more reactions. Later.